Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen Oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, it was, let's take a look at the uh, S&Ps. Okay. And um, just a quick look. Uh, it's kind of a short view. Anyhow, uh, the first chart is the, uh, it's a monthly chart of the SPX VIX ratio. And the month ended uh, Friday, May ended Friday. So I'm kind of looking at the month and see where everything is. And anyhow, the, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio. And uh, the window above that is the uh, monthly SPX. So anyhow, in a nutshell, when the SPX makes a higher high and the uh, SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high, that's a negative divergence. A lot of times that comes at near midterm high since this is a monthly chart. And the pink areas, uh, kind of shaded pink areas, are times when the SPX made a higher high and the VIX uh, the SPX VIX ratio made a lower high. I see. And and so right now, um, the SPs made a higher high uh, during May, and uh, the VIX, uh, SPX VIX ratio also made a higher high. So intermediate term wise, we're not seeing any divergence on the VIX. And so I think the uptrend is still intact. Uh, back in April, uh, we talked about um, or the... Uh, uh, the candlestick pattern cl uh, closes halfway above the upper Bollinger Band, warning that uh, you're going to have a consolidation. Yes. Well, the consolidation happened in, uh, in May. And, no, wait a minute. See, we're, that, that was back in March, I guess. And that predicted a, kind of a down April, which we did have. in May was an up month. But anyhow, the sideways move that's been going on for the last three months, we think we'll probably – going to start breaking out to the upside is my point. So um, uptrend is dark. We can take a, a closer look at what's going on right now. we turn to chart two. Okay. Uh, I have it. Unless you got a question. No, no. Well, I know that, you know, the that, you know, Friday, you know, your expectation is that that's a selling climax, right, with that high volume low. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Friday, okay. We're, we're talking about the daily yeah, yes. the frying it because you this went right into the close, and all of a sudden you had an explosion of volume. You had this big rally, right? And uh, the day before Thursday, we went and finally closed that gap of uh, I think it was May tenth. We had a gap there. We gapped above some previous highs of uh, uh, late March, early April. We gapped above it. We came down, filled the gap on lighter volume. If you do a volume stay, it was ten percent lighter. Actually, it's more than that. Then Friday. You get all these weird moves on Friday. That's why. Uh, that's why I think Friday is a good day to to trade, especially if you're down in a bull market. But anyhow, uh, I think in general we're above. We're holding above the previous highs of April, which is around that. Uh, this is the SPY is around twenty five twenty five range. We're holding above it. We're kind of building cause here. I think to move higher. Now I have a couple of trend readings on that chart too. Last Thursday we closed at one point three one. Yes. And yesterday we closed at one point three one. So you you really want panic and, and a trend reading above one point two shows there's panic. So you kinda of have confidence that the panic was starting to form right around that five twenty five area on the SPYs and and we kinda of rallied up a little bit yesterday. Volume didn't really go with it. So I don't know, and then today we're kind of an inside day so far. But I, I think we've got enough panic uh, to move the market higher. It's just kind of taking this time. And so, you know, this consolidation could maybe last a little longer. I don't know. But I don't think there's any top of any consequence is making here because of the chart on page one. Because on the monthly chart, uh, the SPX VIX ratio is not showing any divergence whatsoever. And right now, you're starting to get a little panic in that trend. But it's, and panic only only panic comes at bottom, so you get a little panic. So there's not a top of here of any consequence. Not saying today or tomorrow or, or even this week is going to be an up week, but most likely you're going to find support around that 525 area. So yes, and and when we look, it. you know, there's, there's go ahead. I'm sorry. No, as as you're educating all the tigers and tigresses, it's pretty cool because I I jump behind the desk and the first thing that a couple of tigers are saying, "Hey, Tom, the." 
the you know two-day trend is uh, running 3.3 right now because we had a 1.5 and a 1.76 yesterday. Closing trends. This is meaning yeah, the arms. The arms. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, good, good. Because, yeah, you get panic. The panics is good if you're looking for a low. So if you don't get panic, then you're not you're not seeing the low. So, but, you know, the, the trend readings are, are showing this. there is a support where that gap is or in that vicinity. So that's, that's a good deal. Nice. So um, you want to move on? Yes, sir. I'm out to the next one right now, number three. All right. Chart three, okay. This is a monthly chart. We, we talked about this in depth over oh, yeah. most of most of month of May, and and I wanted to see these indicators close above the mid, the mid Bollinger band to show the momentum has turned up, and it, it has. And you, on a monthly chart, you very seldom get whipped around. You can, matter of fact, uh, there's a there's a big whip back in 2023 on this indicator because it actually. At least one of them did get above mid Bollinger Band, and then fell back down. But in most part, once you're above the mid Bollinger Band, if you go back and look, going back to 2007, you stay above the Bollinger Band. Once you're below it, you're usually below it. Uh, not so much with the GDX GLD ratio on the monthly time frame because it kind of whips back and forth. But the uh, the monthly up down volume, which is the bottom window, okay. and the monthly advanced decline, once you get above the mid-Bollinger Band, it usually stays there and stays there for a long time. Um, anyhow, in a nutshell, month of uh, month of May closed on Friday, May 31st. And both those bands, or both those indicators, the bottom window and the second window up, which is advanced decline and up-down volume, both closed above the mid-Bollinger Band. And once that happens, usually, not saying every week's going to be an up week, but in general, you have now started to trend up that in the past has lasted at least a year and a half and some as long as four years. So a major up move, I think, has begun. And this major bottom formed back in, I think it was October of 2023, um, which was, that was the bottom. But it didn't, this indicator doesn't try to pick the bottom. It tries to catch the 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 move the major move the trend of the market and that's what these two indicators are good for yes and so. it's like, Tim it's ironic that it, it it happens there and they're smoking the golds out here today I actually I actually bought a gold this morning but I was cracking up like oh my God we finally made it because I was out in the middle of Yellowstone I we were talking earlier and I I knew yeah. I was watching I said oh man God this is awesome it's gonna close above it and bottom line we pull it back but that folks that's what gold stocks do stay right there Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out there. We have the Dow up 106. NASDAQ is up two. S&P's are flat. We are talking markets with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And, Tim, I have the third chart up right here. Yeah. Anyhow, so the monthly charts flip to a bicycle, and I, I'm, I'm assuming we'll have another chart later on to look at that to help confirm this chart. Let's go look at the short term, see what's going on. Okay. So let's, let's, go, let's go to chart four. And uh, the bottom window works the best. And uh, what it is is uh, the 50 day average of the up down volume uh, for GDX. And any, uh, anything above zero, the market's in an uptrend. When it's below zero, the market's in a downtrend. Yes. And it's been above zero, uh, I don't know. Uh, Looks like the beginning of April or so in, in that train, and it's staying above zero. So we're, we're we're about 15 right now. So this is kind of an intermediate term chart. You know, 50 days is about two and a half months, give or take. So the kind of an intermediate term trend is staying strong too. It's up, hanging around 15 over the last uh, couple of weeks. So this this takes out all that noise in the market. You know, if it starts. If this indicator starts going down when the GDX is going up, that's usually a bad sign. That's not even doing that. It's just staying around that plus 15. Even, uh, and this is current reading. Uh, even though the market's off uh, on GDX here, you know, close to 4%, it's not really affecting this chart. So let's even look. Let's look at even a shorter term chart. Let's go to chart five. Yes, and I just want to uh, fill in it because there is no doubt, folks. Okay, that. These gold and silvers are getting stronger. Um, you know, just as Tim said, yeah, we're back down today.
But when they start moving, man, they're, you know, if you get... Gold stocks are a little bit different than silver stocks, but when they move, man, they move. And, and you can see it, Tim, the last two weeks, man. I mean, the, the, it was just a different type of movement, meaning really move, you know. Okay, so I got yeah. the next chart up here. Uh, actually, go back to chart four real quick. Okay. Uh, I want, uh, the top window is GDX, and I think the head and shoulder bottom forming there in this, if you do the measures on it, comes around 50 bucks on, on, uh, on this head and shoulders. That doesn't mean it has to happen anytime soon, but that's a major target. But I draw a neckline there, so in my opinion, you had a sign of strength through the neckline. That neckline comes in around eyeball around 33, 34. So that's probably about the worst scenario you're going to get, and we're uh, GDX right now is right around 34. So you're probably closer to a low than a high. And this chart with with the internal still remaining strong, you know, so this is not a top of any consequence. So okay, now let's flip to chart five. Okay. And so this chart now this is the previous chart was eighteen or there was a fifty day average was about two and a half months. This is an eighteen day average. Kind of works the same way. You get divergences going on and we don't have really any divergences here. But even though the market's down and these are, were current when I sent this chart, so we're not even uh, near minus 10 to, to explain the bottom window is the 18 day average of the up down volume and it needs to stay above minus 10 and the next window up is the GDX advanced decline 18 day average and it also needs to stay above minus 10 and we're coming in uh, when I drew the chart one was about 8 and the other one was 5 plus 5 plus 8 so we're, we're staying above minus 10 on both of those charts. So even the short term still looks good here. Yes. Um, um, so I don't know. We're probably, you know, maybe testing the neckline of the head and shoulders bottom in this vicinity. Maybe we get down to 33. Maybe we don't. But anyhow, in this vicinity is probably where the low is going to form. If this was the top, we'd be down by minus 10 right now. Yeah. Uh, before even that market even starts pulling back. We're not doing that, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe a little mush in here, billing cause, and then from there we'll probably go higher. So don't think of any top of any consequences forming here. Nice. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, the year midterm trend, the short term trend, actually still look good. Things can change, you know, but it usually doesn't change that quickly. So I, I'm thinking in general we're uh, we're still going to hold up, and and I think the metals are actually going to weaken here, and I think the uh, because the GDX GLD ratio uh, is showing starting to show strength, I think the metals may kind of falter here, and I think the the stocks themselves, the, the gold stocks and silver stocks, are actually remain stable if not rise uh, going forward here. So, but that's about uh, as deviant as it can get, right? <laughs> yeah, that's really, you know, because over the over the last several years, you know, gold goes down. There's these gold stocks and silver stocks get decimated. Yep. So I'm thinking that whole character of the market is changing right now. Right. No, I, yeah. listen, I can see it, particularly because, you know, we got the buy on the monthly. It's a big deal, man. There's no doubt. And these ratios, yeah. folks, you got to pay attention to Tim's ratios, man. I mean, no one has them. Uh, bottom line is that you'll see, uh, you know, how consistent they are. And, and the cool thing is, folks, if they're, if, if, let's picture this when, when, if one doesn't work, that gives you just as much information on the other side, which is just so cool because it's so hard to, you know, flip from a particularly what we're talking about here. You're talking about a trend that has been down in the gold stock since 2020, maybe 2016 and some of them. You got the flip on the other side. We're in June of 2024. You know, so it's really cool, Tim. No doubt, man. I just I just yeah. popped up the last chart, Tim. Yeah, this is a real interesting chart. I wish I had data going back further, but it's not the case. Anyhow, the, the second window down from the top, which is all the colors on it, yes. is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX. Okay. So this is another ratio. So, and it, I was always trying to figure out what, trying to gather information on this. What I did find out, which I think is really important, anything above... Uh, um, anyhow, is this a monthly chart or is this, a, you know, no, this is a daily chart. So anyhow, the chart goes back to 2008, really, when when the data starts. Okay. But what's important about this chart is when the bullish percent index, gold miners index slash GDX 
stays above point or 2.25, we're at 2.51 right now, or 2.52. Yes. And it's very rare to get up there in that range. It only happens in major bull moves in the market, and that's the, the shaded green area on the GDX charges when that happened. And we just started staying above a, a 2.25 right now. So this indicator suggests something big is going on in the gold stocks, not necessarily gold the gold stocks. Yep. It happened back in 2008. It didn't stay above it for some reason, but it did in 2016. That's where GDX basically doubled in that one year. The same thing happened in 2000, uh, uh, 2019. It basically doubled over the next year, year and a half on GDX. One, I think one went from 20 to 40. The other one went from 14 to 28, I think it was. Yes. So I'm thinking at least that's what's going to happen here over the next uh, year because th- these are big rallies when you get above 2.25, <coughs> and we're above it right now. And so you can I'm see this very clearly, this- folks, uh, very clearly on the chart that just uh, that Tim just sent over. As Tim said, the 2008, yeah, it didn't hold much, but guess what? Those other two, they held in, in a big way. So make sure you check this out, folks. And you know that the uh, bottom line is that the, the program's archived, okay? So if you're driving in your car, bottom line, you know, you can go go through this whole thing tonight and, um, you know, study them, check them out so you can really understand them. Tim Ord, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to having you on Thursday. All right, see you, man. Take have care. A good one. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.